Hey guys, my name is Chase Van Gorp. I'm here at UT Health San Antonio where I'm a senior. I'm going to be helping you with your Class 1 resins. I'm going to show you the materials you need to be successful in doing your Class 1 resins, whether it's for a practical or you're planning to do this on the patient for the first couple times. We're going to be successful together. So what you have here is your operative cassette. Anytime you do an operative, whether it's amalgam or resin, a core buildup, whatever, you're going to have to check out this operative cassette. It comes with everything you need from cotton forceps, mirror, explorer, your carvers, your burnishers, your amalgam loaders, but definitely has what you need, especially these burnishers for the composite. Here we have articulating forceps with a little bit of articulating paper in there for checking occlusion. We have scissors and hemostats that came from the operative cassette. We have a mixing well for mixing our primer and adhesives uh, as we etch bond and adhere the composite to the tooth. We have curb brushes that can be used to cover the tooth with those materials or move composite. And then we have our composite gun. This is a standard composite gun that has a it's spring loaded where the spring can come in and out. The composite comes in these little carpules. You pop the cap off, you pull the spring back, you insert the nose of the composite carpule first into the gun, you close the spring, and then you're ready to go. We have floss and rubber dam. Flossing for flossing our rubber dam down can also be used for checking class two interproximal contacts. Here's our rubber dam. Our tips that can be used on different uh, syringes that extrude different materials. This is a wetting resin. That's a little white flowable piece of resin that takes the stickiness off your composite so you can move it around better with your brushes or burnishers. If you want a better look at this whiting resin, here it is. And so I can put it, you can put it on your glove. And then what I like to do before moving composite is I grab my composite instrument, like this bargy instrument, and you can slather both sides. And now it's wetted and ready to work on the composite. Here we have our three-step or two-step bonding system. Whether, with whatever system you're gonna use, you're gonna start with the etchant here. This is a 32% phosphoric acid etch with benzalkonium chloride. That's important because that's going to, um, the benzalkonium chloride is gonna help the primer and adhesive work. The purpose of the etch is to remove the smear layer after you prepped into a tooth. Now, if you don't have benzalkonium chloride in your etchant, you're gonna need consepsis it removes uh, MMP inhibitors, that's matri matrix metalloproteases. And so you need to block those out with the consepsis or with the benzalkonium chloride in your etch in order for this system to work. This is Scotchbond multi-system. It's an etch and rinse three-step procedure where we etch and then prime and then bond. But if you don't want to do a three-step, you can do a two-step, which would be just etch in and all bond you which is both a primer and an adhesive. We'll show you both today. Over here we have our carbide block, or operative block. They come with our latch round burrs that can excavate decay, our finishing burrs for uh, finishing composite and removing um, sharp enamel. And then we have our uh, carbides here that like our 329, our 330s, our 56s, those are used to actually prep into the tooth. And so if you can just kind of make it simple for yourself, prep, excavate decay, finish. I like the 7901 and the 7404, especially for finishing composites. And then we move into our polishing system. This is a jiffy block and then our soft flex disc system. And then we have sandpaper strips and white cones. The Jiffy system is like sandpaper. It comes in three shapes and three uh, colors. We have disc, we have cones, and then we have uh, the diamond brush. The color you go in is from green to yellow to white. And then I like to finish with the diamond coated brush. And then in the soft less system, we go from coarse to fine from dark red, orange, orange yellow, and yellow, and then black to light blue. Keep in mind, these have two sides to them, a shiny white side, plastic side, 
and then the coarse abrasive side. The coarse abrasive side has to be touching the composite in order to get it to finish. You'll load these into a mandrel. The mandrel is a latch unit that comes out of the operative block. And then you load it by sticking it on the end. And now you can have two ways to move the mandrel. Just make sure that the abrasive side of the soft flex is against the tooth. Same thing with the white cones here that can be used to polish up composite at the end or sandpaper strips. So that's everything you guys need uh, from starting to prepping the tooth uh, to placing composite and then polishing it so it's real nice. Uh, keep these materials in mind, arrive early to set up and you'll be great to go. Take floss and thread it through your rubber dam clamp. Insert your rubber dam clamp loop into the last hole that should be punched at a five. You can grab the rubber dam clamp loop and the rubber dam in your hand. Engage the prongs of the rubber dam forcep around the holes and you're going to insert it and then release. Now you can set the rubber dam below the clamp and you can start pushing down the rubber dam. Use Bisco's 32% phosphoric acid etch with BAC. Agitate the etch to ensure that there are no voids that could result in unetched etch for 15 seconds. Spray with air to vacuum up the initial and then spray with water for five seconds. Use All Bond Universal. Place one drop into the well. Then use a micro brush. Apply the adhesive to the cable surface margin. 10 second scrub. Air dry. Apply a second layer generously. And cure. Dispense a small amount. And then you can use your plastic instrument to insert. Now you can use your wetting resin. Dispense a small amount to the glove and you can wipe the instrument and then wipe it off the excess. Do a push pat for the first layer with the first layer being two millimeters or less facilitating the anatomical features of the second layer. Remove any excess. Using a PKT3, start to mold your upper layer.
this is an IPC, you can utilize it to wipe away any excess material. So that way you wipe away any flash. A 7901 or 7404 can be utilized to incorporate, create the anatomy. This is an enhanced polishing point. You can use it to polish the surface. Follow the slopes of the natural anatomy. Use an explorer to confirm that your margins are not super marginated or submarginated. You want to make sure that you're following the proper slopes and valleys and that you have your central groove in the right place, confirming that you've maintained the anatomy of the fossa and the oblique ridges. Thank you for joining us today on this class one restoration and occlusal composite restoration. Please join us for future videos and good luck.